I'm here to tell you, begin a relationship with Jesus Christ. Call on his name. Confess with your mouth. Why is that? Oh, because you own the street? No, because I don't want to hear your amplified horn Fuck off. Okay. Go. It's a really great thing that I don't really care much about your opinion. Fuck off. No, oh, sorry, babe. Why are you so full of hate? I'm here to tell you that one day you're going to die. What's going to happen after you die? You know why you're mad? Because you don't like hearing that there is a penalty for your sin. When you rebel against God, bad things happen. Is it? What do you believe? You believe that we came from a monkey? No, I believe that you came from Tom and Sam. Get the fuck out of the neighborhood. Well, why is that? If I came out here talking about anything else, you would be okay with it, but you're angry. Why? Because there's something about the name of Jesus. How about you say Jesus when you're taking the Lord's name in vain, though, don't you, sir? Amen. We can be here. Might as well take a picture. Yeah, what's up, man? Yeah. I want to make sure you go with it. No questions, but I want to. Why you want a picture? Okay. Church of Christ Ministries, you can find us on YouTube. Thanks, boss. My friends, how is it that we can take the Lord's name in vain? We can say Jesus Christ when we get mad. God is displeased with that, but yet we don't want to hear the name of Jesus in any other capacity. It's because something inside of us knows that what we're doing is not pleasing God. Okay guys, after a rough couple of days, we are here much more equipped on a Sunday afternoon, early evening, walking towards Canal Place, heading towards where we believe either the parade is or was or is going to be. And we have uh, a new speaker. Yesterday, our speaker was very ill-equipped for the noise and the crowds and it just didn't get loud enough. Um, these party boxes, they're just no good. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. So we're out here, second day of the Mardi Gras parades and we're just looking to set up camp. We got a much better speaker. It's gonna be efficient and we're gonna be preaching the gospel. And I'm telling you, I stood in front of this speaker for a little second as Philip was testing it and the sound waves were going through my chest. So I pray that Holy Ghost fire goes through the chest of every person that is near this speaker today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, we got the little baby out here. We're gonna have to be careful with him. And um, yeah, it's just always challenging. You know, you're never gonna be going through life with perfect conditions, perfect equipment, whatever. So um, well, we're trusting in God and really, I think it's gonna be a very, very, very powerful time of evangelism. I think with Mardi Gras, there's a lot of preachers who come out to preach during it. So everyone who's out here is getting many different impressions of Christianity of what our message is about and I just my prayer is that we really say things that are gonna stick to people's souls that they're gonna something that's gonna make a lasting impression that's gonna show the true love of God that's gonna give them like just the real meaning of the gospel and they can carry that with them even through their bad decisions that they'll remember that as you walk through the city, you can see a lot of these statues, a lot of buildings, a lot of art, culture. Uh, there's also a lot of weed signs, a lot of, a lot of different type of worldly stuff. You see psychics, tarot card readers all over the place. People dressed in crazy. Everybody's decked out for Mardi Gras. Everybody's looking to have a good time, looking to party, looking to get wild. So um, anytime you have that celebration of sin, there's a need to rebuke and to warn. Now obviously sinners are gonna be sinners. They don't know and have any real reason uh, to live godly. So we have to help remind them of the consequences of that decision. We have free will to do whatever we wanna do. There's always a consequence and a price to pay for doing that. So there is grace available for whoever calls on the Lord. It's our job to make sure that they understand that God can reach them where they're at. They're not too far gone. A lot of people, they're like, man, I've just done too much. I don't know, I don't think God could ever forgive me. A lot of people think that, believe it or not, there's more than you would believe. And uh, I'm just trying to remind them, man, like God's love is always faithful, always available. Of course, there are those who are just full out, you know, living a lifestyle of sin and not really um, caring about the consequences, not really feeling much convic conviction about that. But, 
let's not forget that there are people here chasing those feelings and experiences people who are running from God people who do know him who have turned away from him and you know God hasn't forgotten them and hopefully we can also be a reminder to those who have run away from God who are running away from God that you know this is where your fulfillment is going to be in his presence living for him um, through a relationship with him he hasn't forgotten about you and yeah you can't run from him we're trying to get to Canal Street because I think that's where the parade is going to be. From what we've been told by the police, uh, the hottest place to go where all the people are is going to be up here. So we're headed that way. Hopefully we'll just be, we'll end up exactly where we're supposed to be. You know, New Orleans and Louisiana as a whole has a very rich, deep-rooted history of food and music, jazz music, Cajun and Creole food. Um, the swamplands run deep and you know a lot of people groups were a lot of people groups were isolated uh, they couldn't go into the city to get supplies so they had to live off the land that's why you see uh, Creole Cajun food or, or big on rice big on crawfish big on shrimp uh, chicken uh, vegetables they using the whole animal It's just because people lived in poverty had to live on the land and they used everything they could get their hands on and I think that's really cool and it leads to deep flavors and a lot of rich culinary experience but along with that comes a deep rooted history in witchcraft specifically voodoo and thus you're gonna see on the streets a lot of psychic shops tarot card readers and psychics line the streets with um, tables and booths you see these little corner stores uh, sitting next to psychic shops uh, a lot of massage parlors, a lot of places that you can buy tobacco and, and marijuana pipes, bongs, hookahs. And it's just, it seems like the city has really gone into darkness where the, the bulk of your experience in this place is going to be around either shopping here at the mall, spending money at the casino, partying on Bourbon Street and getting drunk, or buying, you know, your paraphernalia for your drugs and and your tobacco um, it's you know there's restaurants with food but the bulk of it is based around a godless sinful rebellious experience and that's why you see so many preachers here you know I'm very much usually not a fan of the signs and the t-shirts but I think in these situations we have just a celebration of godlessness you need that warning and you need a little bit more of an aggressive approach so I'm fine with it in these uh, I would say in these specific types of scenarios. Hello. Yeah. All right guys, so we're gonna go over, hopefully we're gonna try and move over to this parade route and preach down the street. I don't know if we're gonna be allowed to, but we're gonna try. And uh, we'll see if they stop us or not. I think be it would crazy, be really, like pushing a stroller. really cool. Somebody's gonna have to. No, but one of you guys are gonna have to push this. Yeah. Bro, this is gonna be nuts. We're gonna try it. We're gonna try. What are they gonna tell us? Like, oh, you can't do that. My I mean, bad. It's a public sidewalk, right? It's a road. Everybody else is walking on the road. So our plan is right now is we're gonna walk down the street where this parade route is and preach with this very loud new speaker that we got. We'll see how it goes. I think it might be a little bit nuts and uh, the police might react, I don't know. They might tell us to get off the street, but we'll see. Uh, I think it's gonna be exciting. Uh, we live for this sort of stuff. You should always ask yourself, what can I do that's just gonna get more people's attention? Not to provoke, not to be confrontational in a way that's ungodly, but just to make yourself a spectacle unto all men so that Christ might be glorified, all in all. So we're gonna stand on top of this hill, we're gonna preach the gospel, metaphoric hill. We're going to preach the gospel, shine our light, we're going to walk down the street. Hopefully it will be louder than the music that's going right now. And uh, really excited about what's going to happen, so we'll see. 
I'll see you guys on the other side. I just want to thank you so much for Philip's life, God, and we just want to pray that your spirit will rush upon him, Lord Jesus Christ. Remove every demonic spirit from surrounding him, and I pray that you put a legion of angels around him that will deliver him from all of his destructions and that will speak for him, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that fire will come out of his mouth, just like you said to Jeremiah, where the fire will come out and it will consume the people of Judah like wood. I pray that these people, their hearts get consumed by the fire of God, Lord, and I just pray that you help them to speak as the very oracles of God. And we pray that you give them dominion that you give them power, that you give them strength, that you give them the ability to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit today. And we pray that souls get saved in each and every single block, Lord Jesus Christ. Let your word go forth like lightning, Lord, and let it burn up and devour any hindrance or obstacle in the way. We pray that you strengthen him and that you give him the desire and the ability and the zeal to speak as the very oracles of God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friends. I want to talk to you today about the eternal state of your soul. Do you know Jesus? And does Jesus know you? I'm not out here to condemn you. I'm here to lift up the name of God. To let you know that we are living in the last days. And I want you to know him. To be able to stand before him well. I want this country to turn back to Jesus. I want the light of God to shine upon the United States of America. Our government is in shambles. Our Congress, our Senate, the executive branch, the ju judicial branch, the whole thing is a mess. But guess what? There's still hope in Jesus because even when men fail, God is always faithful. God does not fail. It is us. We rebel against God, and then we blame him for the outcome. My friends, I want you to just reminisce on the decisions that you've made. Amen. Are they good, and are they holy? And if you're living in ungodliness, don't be mad at God when you're held accountable for the misdeeds of your life. If you rebel against God, do not blame him when bad things happen as a consequence of that. All right, I'm not here telling you that you sitting on a sidewalk is sin, but I'm here to tell you that Mardi Gras in all is a representation of much godlessness. And we know this, it's not something that's new to you. Many of us know that people are out here doing drugs, getting drunk, they're out here living in all sorts of godlessness, and that is heartbreaking to God. God wants to save us from sin. But my friends, we have to be a people who call upon his name. Let us fear God and depart from evil. Hear the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be exalted and every mountain and high hill be made low. Let the crooked places be made straight and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all eyes will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. I'm here to bless you. I want blessings on your home. I want your family to be blessed. I want you to see prosperous days. But I, I promise you, my friends, the prosperity of your soul is found through surrender unto God. When we humble ourselves before him, the Bible says, God speaking to King Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, he said, He said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. God is a God of peace. God is a God of light, and in him there is no darkness. We live in a world of chaos because we have forsaken the ways of God and gone our own way. And many of us are angry at God. You blame God. The atheists of this world are not truly atheists. They just are mad at God because of things that have happened. God bless you. I pray that you would find the Lord Jesus and repent before it's too late. But my friends, time is running out. We just went through a period of darkness where some of you were scared to death to leave your home because you were afraid to die. And how quickly we forget, how quickly we forget and we're out here living in lawlessness and godlessness and I'm not here to condemn you. The Bible says that in our sin we are condemned already. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So I'm here walking down this path of destruction and you can see the, the physical manifestation of the spiritual decay. But my friends, we're living in rampant wantonness and yet we are wanting God to bless our cities and our countries. This simply cannot be. 
God cannot bless a country of sin and rebellion. But my friends, I promise you, if you humble yourself before God, he will lift you up. If you give him your heart, he will give you his spirit and he'll put him, his spirit inside of you. He'll give you new life. Amen. He'll give you the promise of eternal life. He'll redeem you. And I can tell you this, there is no greater love than this. That he laid down his life for us. That he went to the cross for us. The Bible saying, the certificate of death for all the sin that you've committed. Being nailed to the cross with Christ. That list of sin that you've committed unto God. The blood of Jesus being spilled so that you might have life in him. And all you have to do is believe and call on the Lord Jesus. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead that you can be saved. All you have to do is call on Jesus. Humble yourself in his sight. Let us walk in humility. It is the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life that are taking us from the things of God. Carry this for me, brother. But there is peace found in Jesus. There is peace found in Jesus. Do we believe? Many of us, we say we believe, we go to church, we pay our tithes, we're deacons and we're leaders and we're pastors and evangelists and worship leaders and yet we celebrate the things of this world. We bask in the things of this world and we clamor and claw after all manner of things that are against the ways of God. And I'm here to tell you that I'm not wanting to condemn you. I'm here to tell you that God is displeased with evil. And let us all repent and call on the name of Jesus. We can get drunk. We can fill up on the things of this world. You're not going to find peace at the bottom of a bottle or in a little plastic bag. You're not going to find peace in a strange woman's bed. You're not going to find peace in celebrating in the darkness and celebrating sin. You're not going to find peace. But there is peace in Jesus. And I'm not here to tell you to be religious. I'm here to tell you begin a relationship with Jesus Christ. Call on his name. Confess with your mouth. Why is that? Oh, because you own the street? No, because I don't want to hear your amplified horseshit. Fuck off. Okay. So, it's a really great thing that I don't really care much about your opinion. Fuck off. No, oh, sorry, babe. Why are you so full of hate? I'm here to tell you that one day you're going to die. What's going to happen after you die? You know why you're mad? Because you don't like hearing that there is a penalty for your sin. When you rebel against God, bad things happen. Is it? What do you believe? You believe that we came from a monkey? No, I believe that you came from mom and dad. Get the fuck out of the neighborhood. Well, why is that? If I came out here talking about anything else, you would be okay with it, but you're angry. Why? Because there's something about the name of Jesus. How about you say Jesus when you're taking the Lord's name in vain, though, don't you, sir? We can be here. Yo, what's up, man? Why you want a picture? Twitch of Christ Ministries. You can find us on YouTube. Thanks, folks. My friends, how is it that we can take the Lord's name in vain? We can say Jesus Christ when we get mad. God is displeased with that, but yet we don't want to hear the name of Jesus in any other capacity. It's because something inside of us knows that what we're doing is not pleasing God. There's many things that I do that don't please God. But you know what? I have a relationship with my God. So when I mess up, I can go to him and I can say, God, forgive me. Father, forgive me. Help me. Restore me. Keep me on your hands. Help me to know you more. Help me to understand your love. God, you are a perfect father and I'm just a mess up. But Lord, make me new. Restore my soul. And I promise you, God is faithful. I promise you, God is faithful. I promise you God is faithful. I don't get anything out of this. I'm just here for your soul. I'm here so that you might know Jesus. I'm here because I want you to be saved. That one day you're going to die. You're going to stand before God. You're going to give an account for the deeds of your life. And when you stand before the Father in heaven, I want you to stand before him well. And you're not going to stand before him well because of what you have done or the way that you have lived. You're going to stand before him well because of who you know and who knows you. You're not going to go to heaven based on whether you have a good Christian spiritual life. You understand? You only go to heaven because of Jesus Christ and what he has done. Now that will lead to good Christian living and spirituality. 
but that's a result of the one that you know. It all begins with relationships. Repent just means I'm going to change the direction of my life. I don't want to walk in darkness. I'm going to change my mind, and I'm going to walk towards the face of God. And in that, with faith, God is going to enable me to have the strength and the power and the capability to live a life of holiness, a life that's pleasing unto him. And I'm going to mess up. I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. I'm going to find myself wayward at times, but God will be faithful to restore my soul.